Hello everybody and welcome! Yes, we're doing another mission and this one is partly inspired by what has happened recently with some decision NASA made. Because they decided their next new Frontiers mission is going to be Dragonfly. Yes, this is a very cool thing because they're going to send a quadcopter to Titan, one of Saturn's moons that has an atmosphere and maybe can uh, harbor some forms of life already or will be in the future. We don't know that, but we should know that. And that's why NASA is sending something like Dragonfly over there to investigate. And well, if you know me, I like to take concepts and put them to the max. So why don't we take the concept of a quadcopter operating on a foreign planet and apply some Kerbal logic to that. And yes, this is what's basically inside the fairing of this big rocket. And you probably have seen that in the thumbnail. I'm not sure what I'm going to put in the thumbnail while I'm recording this, but I'm pretty sure you'll have an idea of what's in there. Sorry for the silent movie type recording. Some reason, for some reason, my recording software didn't record the audio of the game for this part of the video. So um, yeah, sorry. Anyhow, we're going to see some very nice stage separation here. Sergei Karolov would be proud. Anyways, we're continuing to orbit. This is a rather a very simple launch because the actual payload is quite light, to be honest, if you compare it to other things that are well put into the planet I'm going to fly to with uh, this type of technology. All right, uh, we are now already on our transfer stage. This is going to send us to our destination. But before we do that, we need some power because we're going to be on our way for quite some time. And yeah, we've started our transfer burn. This is just one skiff engine, so it has very low thrust to weight ratio. But it's going to do the job because we're going to Eve, there we go. It's a retrograde orbit, but that does not matter because we're gonna land anyways. Okay, a nice little montage of the spaceship getting there to our destination. You know the drill, we have to get there, we have to orient ourselves, we have to do a retrograde burn to get into a stable orbit around our destination planet. All of this is going to happen with Dragonfly as well, by the way. But, of course, it's going to be a lot smaller in scale than this one. Speaking of scale, they're going to need a very large booster to get that thing up there. Probably a Falcon Heavy? Who knows? We've ditched the transfer stage and we decided to deorbit it into Eve's hellfire of an atmosphere. Probably going to burn up very soon. But we don't want to burn up ourselves, so we're going to correct the orbit just a little. And here we go! This is what's going to land on EVE. Yep, it's a quadcopter rocket. Basically a return vehicle that's going to use the new power of the braking ground expansion that gave us rotors. Yes, electric motors that are going to power some propellers and with those we're going to ascend as high as possible and only then are going to use our rocket fuel. Heat shields front and back. Why also in the back? Uh, if I would not put one in the back then this would be not stable at all and flip around and everything would die. And we don't want that, do we? But we can ditch the heat shield now, the top heat shield, so we uh, get a lot lighter and also the assembly for the heat shield and some parachutes. Why do I use the parachutes? Well, the rotors take up a lot of electricity and I could extend solar panels, but we're still too fast to do that. And we're also above the wrong part of EVE, because this is the Explodium C. And if you know EVE, then you know this is basically the largest body of water that that planet has to offer. Not really a great sight to land, unless you're a boat. Okay, what I tried here is a wait for all the parachutes to deploy, then spin up the rotors and sort of send that thing towards that piece of land you see in the back. 
but I totally messed that up and this is also not really designed to fly horizontally, it's really just designed to fly up vertically as high as possible. And yeah, you can imagine what the result is gonna be. Again! Yes, we have to do this again. Alright, I gotta skip through all of that descent malarkey because we don't need to watch that again as well. And same here, we're gonna ditch the parachutes and use the rotors to really soft land that vehicle. And the batteries are enough to enable uh, the vehicle to do that here, but they won't last enough for an entire ascent. Right, we have touched down. That's great. Solar panels out and back in. We don't want those destroyed by some falling parachute assembly thingies. Yeah, which are gonna explode anyways. Or not, jumping around on the floor of EVE. Alright, we don't have any fuel yet in our tanks. That's why we're gonna need the refinery and drill that's going to tip the rocket a little bit over because it's boring so much into the surface. Meanwhile, our little Kerbal is going to plant a flag to commemorate the occasion that we have successfully tested our EVE Ascent Rotor Vehicle. Alright, let's get back in there, you little green thingy, and uh, get rid of that ladder assembly, because we don't need that anymore after the craft is refilled with delicious fuel, which took ages. Anyway, first attempt to... Uh, <sighs> Again. Yeah, I really hope NASA does better with their Dragonfly than I do with this contraption, but it probably also is a lot heavier than what NASA had. Fully fueled, this weighs around 37 tons, and this was basically the screen I had to look at for almost an hour until I reached my target height, which is around 19,000 19, meters, so 19 kilometers above ground, is where this thing here maxes out. So, yeah, just some impressions of that. I'm thinking about maybe releasing the entire 50 minutes of video as some sort of the most boring Kerbal video you'll ever see. I don't know. Okay, time to ditch the rotors and switch to our rocket engines, which we did here. And we're now ascending through, well, the upper parts of the atmosphere. Almost the medium parts of the atmosphere? <laughs> well, I don't know, because EVE is so huge and has such a high level of atmosphere compared to other planets. Alright, we've ditched the first part of tanks and we're now on our penultimate stage and now on our final stage, which is really tiny, but still offers us almost 1700 meters per second of delta V, which is important on a planet like EVE where you need a lot of delta v to get out of the atmosphere and into safe orbit and we did not have enough not this time at least it's very much depending on how much uh, you put the angle of attack uh, during the first part of the ascent this is really finagling how to do it but yeah i tried to eva this kerbal and again that was no use, because ever since they changed how Kerbal EVA is controlled back in, I don't know, I am no longer able to really control Kerbals. I don't get it anymore. Anyways, next attempt. We have 1655 delta V left and we need 1658 to circularize. Well, that could maybe work. So I fired up that little Terrier engine which looks great after the reskin, to be honest. And I really like the variance with truss or no truss. And yes, we barely made it. With six meters per second delta V left to complete the burn, we're still in a safe orbit around EVE. Uh, there's only one drawback. I did not bring any return vehicle to get Jab back to Kerbin. Hmm. Oh well, good luck, Jab. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Also, you can watch one of the two cool videos shown on the right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.